Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. Today's show features the amazing Gail Lynn, who is a pioneer in frequency healing. Gail is the inventor of the harmonic egg, a resonant chamber that delivers a bioenergy therapy, which restores the body's balance and promotes healing. Dare to Dream podcast won the COVR award for best radio and podcast show. Welp Magazine lists this as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It's high ranking in self-improvement under Apple Podcasts. And I just got some beautiful news today. I woke up to receive an email and was notified that Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger just won three talk radio positive change awards, specifically under inspiration, motivation, self-improvement, as well as spirituality, all three categories. I am so grateful because it means you guys are listening. And I think as this world is change, swirling and changing is what I really want to say. This is such a beautiful opportunity for us all. What new choices we're going to make, how we're going to step out, how we're going to change, heal, our wounds, and know that we came here to be a light at a really auspicious time. So the conversation today with Gail is going to be talking about an invention that, that can actually assist you on your way. I also want to thank the sponsors of the show, Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world, so you can become a facilitator or you can take one of their classes anywhere. Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com. I am Debbie Dashinger. I'm a book writing coach, and I help you go from the idea of your book to the completion and publication. Additionally, I've got a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. I am getting so many calls about this right now. A lot of clients coming on board for the bestseller program. And finally, I teach you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. So you can be your own PR publicist. I love to help you get kickstarted in this so that you can start to become way more visible and comfortable with all these media modalities. Go to debbie-singer.com slash gift. My gift to you. There's templates and videos and all these beautiful, easy how-tos. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. So my guest today, Gail Lynn, is a renowned visionary. She's an inventor. She is a pioneer in the realm of frequency healing, known for her groundbreaking creation, The Harmonic Egg. She's the author of Unlocking the Ancient Secrets to Healing, Why Science is Looking to the Past for the Future of Medicine. And Gail's journey was born out of personal adversity. In 2007, at the age of 37, Gail faced a life-altering diagnosis of severe cardiovascular stress, a condition formed by the relentless stress of two challenging relationships and three fiercely competitive careers in the automotive, telecommunications, and film industries. To restore her health, Gail immersed herself in the realm of energy medicine, culminating in the creation of the Harmonic Egg, a healing chamber that integrates cutting-edge light and sound technologies with the use of sacred geometry and Tesla mathematics. The Harmonic Egg offers a life-changing solution for individuals seeking to restore balance and vitality. If you'd like to learn more about Gail and her transformative work, go to harmonicegg.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Gail Lynn to Dare to Dream. It's great to have you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. That's so exciting. I was really looking forward to this today. Thank you. I loved your book, by the way. Um, and I loved all the transparency in it. And wow, what what an amazing life journey. I know you must be very happy to be where you are, but let's go back 37 years old and you are told by the doctors you have the heart of an 80 year old. Oh my God, that must've been such a depressing doctor appointment. It was, 
and I knew that I needed to make some changes quickly. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here much longer. Yeah. So is that, I, I mean, I know from your story that there were these elements. And if I may, one of the things I noticed about the elements that were unfolding, even though there was a lot of stress and disappointment going on in the early years, still you were accumulating knowledge from the various things you opened yourself up to doing, which I feel really assisted in your invention right now. But also you were an avid reader, right? And you were very involved with like metaphysics and all of these beautiful transformative books out there. Um, and so with all the healing and the changes you've done, do you now have a younger heart than an 80 year old? I do. Actually, uh, an anti-aging doctor said, you need to be careful. You're 53 now, but you could still get pregnant because you have the body of a 35 year old. And I was like, what? That's amazing. Well, the, the egg, as we know, these kind of conscious technologies, when we change our mindset, we don't have to age. You know, this is all stuff that we've been hoodwinked to believe. And so I feel like the more sessions I do, the younger I'm getting. And I have a see a 70 year old center owner and she's going to be doing some podcasts to show her picture from 10 years ago and her picture. Now she looks younger. She just did a skydive with her granddaughter. And she said, it has to be from the egg. She's a naturopathic doctor. And she said, I, I haven't done anything different. And mm -hmm. I look younger. I feel younger. And she's so amazing, such an amazing soul. So yeah. So I, I look back at my journey and laugh and laugh and laugh how the universe put me in to engineering and automotive and then in international business and telecom and then in Hollywood for the extemporaneous communication of being in front of the camera and I just laugh and laugh and then I had to have this health scare to find my way back to health. And it, it, it's just, it's comical how we can be guided and, and I'm a yes person. Mm. I say yes. Something happens, I say yes. Now, do I say no sometimes first? Of course, I'm human. When it was presented this journey and, and be in this field to help people to heal, I thought, no, mm -mm, I'm not going to do this. So when I resisted it, of course, it was like a bad country song. I lost my dog, my job, my house. And until I said yes, then everything was going to be blocked and this is the, the path of the universe and I lost and the universe won or God or source or whatever word you use. And so it's been such a blessing that um, I feel it has been bestowed upon me to bring this out to the world and then to inspire people, to inspire people to know that you can do your dream. We just had an owner call. I do a video call with my owners every other Friday. And I said, my sister's on the call. She's our fulfillment manager. And I said, I th I've lost everything three or four times. And my sister just says, eh, I've lost count because I always say yes, but I was building other people's dreams. I was building dreams for other people. Now that I'm building my own dreams, everything is working out brilliantly. So it's so wonderful. Well, I experienced your egg yesterday. And so here's something synchronistic. I love when these things happen and you know you're supposed to be connected with somebody such as yourself and your products such as your egg. So as it goes, I had uh, I have a client and she actually wanted to have a phone call right now. And I said, I can't. And I don't know why, because I would typically never do this, but I said, I can't. I am meeting with Gail Lynn and interviewing her uh, the woman from the harmonic egg thinking, oh, she won't know and moving on. And she writes back, oh my God, I love her. I'm actually talking to her and I'm trying to get a harmonic egg here in Nashville, Tennessee. So I was like, all right, this is amazing. And I get it. I get when the universe is making those connections. Then yesterday, I drove quite a distance actually uh, from where I live to Santa Clarita here in California. I met with one of your owners by the name of Alex, and what a beautiful experience that was. So first of all, Alex sat with me in his beautiful lobby, and he spent so much time 
getting to know me, explaining the machine, what it would be like, even to go as far as to say that when he drove into the parking lot that morning, because he's got two different eggs, one with more, he, he typifies it as one with more divine feminine energy and one with more mm, masculine energy. And the male, if you will, the masculine energy egg spoke to him and said, you know, you need to bring her, meaning me, into the egg. I'm working on her today. Like I have activations and healings for her. And I was like, that is so appropriate for where I am right now. So he spent all this time. Then I went in the room. I was gobsmacked when I saw it because it's stunning. It's, it is huge. It felt like I was climbing into a spacecraft for sure. And you've got something up at the top. I won't pretend to know half of what's in there, but there's something up at the top. It's sort of um, a circular piece. And I thought, oh, oh my God, I, I wanted to move ahead like a, a side. And when this takes off, I want to be able to see space. That was my feeling. And then um, I was very sad when it was over. <laughs> I thought, I, I think I need more time in here. So I'm definitely going to book more sessions. And I had interesting things happen. I thought I would fall asleep and I didn't, but I went into a state. I don't know that I, what the name of it is, but it was incredibly relaxed. And I, yeah, had occasional beautiful visions of things and even of being worked on in particular ways that surprised me. And I got a little bit of directive on some things. And then when I came out, of course, Alex spent time with me again, you know, gave me a little bit of something, a nosh to ground me and some electrolytes. And, and of course we found out we had tons in common. And then I said, I really want your card before I leave. And he gives me this beautiful postcard. I went, Oh my goodness. Do you know that three years dur ago during COVID, I have a girlfriend who went for whatever reason all the way to Santa Clarita and experienced this and gave me the same postcard afterwards and said, you need to go do this. So I was like, all right, here we are. So all of that to give the audience a bit of an entree and, and entering into the idea of this beautiful, stunning egg and, um, let me know if there's anything you want to add to that. So I'm making notes because I do want to address some of the things so we can explain it to your audience. And what I tried to create was a divine feminine business model of cooperation so that, um, you know, I wasn't the person that like just sold something to them and then disappeared. So I have owner calls. Our brand attributes are love, integrity, reliability, and community. So I want everybody that... Oh, what a great model. Yeah, it's touched. Everybody that's touched by an egg, I want them to feel love. They feel like it's a cocoon. They've been hugged. And when they walk into a center, just like you experienced with Alex, he's a lovely soul being. Yes. But the eggs find these soul beings that are, that they want to be their guardians. We call them egg guardians. Mm -hmm. And when you go to a center, you're not a number. You're not a dollar amount. You are somebody that we respect and that we honor and we try to support you on your journey. We ask you, you know, these questions, what do you want to work on? And we help you set that intention so that we're holding that intention for you. You are holding the intention. The egg is amplifying the intention. It's, it's an amplifier really. Mm -hmm. So what I've been manifesting like crazy when I do my sessions it's so easy anymore. Even just the simplest things. Oh, I need a $20 bill for a tip. And then all of a sudden a $20 bill shows up. I mean, just easy, easy manifesting because you're clearing all that trauma that is blocking you from your highest self and you're connecting to your higher self. So you're tuned into the, the oneness and the universal wisdom. So beautiful, beautiful. What you go to is the level below the level of consciousness at an awakened state. So you feel like you're in that hypnagogic state because the vibrations and the resonance of the sacred geometry is actually that and you're being immersed in this beautiful music. And so people mm. will actually have smells because it's like you're in an REM sleep state, but you're awake. Yes. So the smells are coming off because your autonomic nervous system is coming into balance and then your body knows how to heal itself. 
So the egg is just the magic of the egg is to create an environment for your body to heal itself naturally. Mm. So that's the magic because your body is the magic. And so then you'll, we'll smell heavy metals or candida, which is a sweet smell, or we'll smell, uh, mm. fatty, like, a like a rancid fat. Somebody has a fatty liver. Sometimes there's a garlic and onion smell. That's digestive problems when they haven't really eaten garlic and onions. And so different smells are different, uh, detoxes, uh, and, and indications, sometimes mold mildew. And so we'll smell these smells, but it's really the body being in that REM level below consciousness and giving it its ability to heal that it's just able to detox. So it is a detox. So we tell people five to seven days to integrate, uh, don't go do other detoxes because we don't want you to have a healing crisis. Um, so respect all these modalities that are, that are coming out now and do them as they're intended to be used. So some people will come in and have a, a, a spa day. So they said, well, I've done massage today. I've, I've been to my chiropractor. I've been to my acupuncturist. And now I'm here for my egg session. And I would tell them, you know what? It's too much. Just come back another day when you can really honor this modality and honor the other modalities that you've done and fully integrate because people will actually uh, think it's so simple. It's so subtle. There's a little bit of music. There's some lights. How can it be so intense and powerful? But because it is a galactic technology, it's very powerful. Mm. And we want people to understand that you don't eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the same time. You eat breakfast, let it integrate, let it digest. Same with energy work. You must let it di digest or integrate. And each egg does have a personality and they are conscious technologies and they're all connected. So the more that are coming on the planet connected to the earth's grid, the more powerful they're all becoming. It's very mm. beautiful. And Alex does uh, tune into his eggs and really listens to them. And they do, they say, um, I had one of my eggs tell me, bring me the girl. I'm like what? Bring you the girl it was a young girl. And that was the egg that wanted to serve this girl. She had gotten her hair dyed um, for the first time at like age 13. And within hours, she was paralyzed from the waist down. And she had to do a lot of stuff to get back to good. Something happened. I'm sure it was where her glass was already full. Yeah. And that that just spilled the glass over and created this within a few hours of paralyzed from the waist down. And the egg said, bring me the girl. And I was 7.30 in the morning. I'm like, what? who's talking to me? And so one of my three eggs, you know, wanted to serve her. And so they do have different personalities. I had a funny one. I had a serious one. And then I had one that was so cocky. It's like, <laughs> I'm better than the other two because I see animals because we had one egg with a platform for you could bring your dog in and you could sit on the platform and most of them have a chair. And uh, that one was like, oh, I see animals. I see people. I'm better than those other two. So very fun. And a lot of the center owners will name their, uh, their eggs, the eggs name themselves. Really. They find the piece of land. They find the owners. It's just beautiful. And then the last thing you said was the, um, the circular structure, which reminds me, I love the moon energy. I've always been kind of, a you know, astrological, um, girl, you know, tuned into the planets. And it's like an eclipse. So you're leaning back and it just looks like an eclipse. And sometimes I feel like I could just reach into infinity through that, that circle that's surrounded by the light. It's so amazing. I had totally forgotten that lights go off and there's sacred geometry. Do you know, I wasn't aware of any of it. Yeah. I know that music. Oh, and he picks such, such correct music for me. It was beautiful. And that was transformative. But I mean, I, like you said, I was put into that state that not quite sleeping, but not conscious, but where the body and the being can heal itself, be in a state of, of wellness. And um, yeah, every so often I'd get, like, I had a very interesting experience where I have the, one of the reasons why I wanted to experience the egg was because I have arthritis and I'm, I'm completely over it. I think this is super old stuff, but um, I'm complete with it. You know, thank you so much. I'm done. Let's move on. And during the egg experience, 
I saw, and this, this is one of those, like, where did that come from? And I know if I went on, on a browser, I could pull up this picture in one second, you'd know what it is, but it is absolutely Chinese related. And it is something they use a lot on their buildings, ancient buildings. And I think sometimes in pictures today, but it is an animal. It's got a giant head and giant eyes and curls around it. I don't know if it would be a depiction of a cat or a dog, but this animal literally came to me with major claws and was scraping in my knee. Now, my first thought was, whoa, that's going to hurt. And no, I felt absolutely nothing. And I, I know enough to surrender and say, wow. This is pretty cool, uh, completely unexpected. Like I have no connection, I thought, with you, but you showed up and I'm trusting you're my healer in this moment to do whatever it is you're doing to my knee. And and I let go and, you know, until the next thing happened. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't want anybody to feel afraid that something like this might come up because it's really beautiful. We've had so many people say there was something there, but I didn't, I wasn't afraid. And I, I felt like I was safe and I've had uh, people tell me, you know, somehow this wolf just showed up right in their face. And I said, this might be your power animal. Mm -hmm. And so look up the meaning of the wolf. And they would call me the next day and say, I looked it up. Oh my gosh, it's exactly what I needed. It's the message I need. And we get diseases and get aches and pains because they're messages from our body. And as soon as we acknowledge them and learn the lesson that that message is there for, it can disappear in a second. Who's to say that a bone needs six to eight weeks to heal, or you can't, uh, you know, cancer is a death sentence. It's not, it's a message. And the longer that you ignore those messages, the louder it's going to yell at you. And so you might have just stubbed your left toe and then you always broke your right leg and then you tore your rotator cuff, you're not listening. And then, then it might manifest into cancer because they, your body has to scream at you because you're not listening. But over the years, I've learned how to listen to my body and everything is gone. Mm -hmm. I feel healthier and more vibrant now than I've ever felt in my entire life. It is so beautiful. And just like um, my son or owner who's 70 she said she feels better than she's ever felt in her entire life yeah i love that and i i do want to experience this more and i do want to bring my dog for sure i think she'll love it and i want to talk about where the technology comes from because i understand that syrian as in the planet sirius and the being syrian have something to do with this will you talk about what the galactic origins are Yes. Um, I didn't know why I came to this planet for a really long time, but when I was in the prototype egg, I remember the feeling of being born. And I thought this is really weird that there's something above the ceiling. I saw my mom there. I saw my dad there. Doctors were there, but something was like rubbing their hands together and going, she's here. And it was so beautiful. And then I realized that that I'm here for a reason, that I'm here to serve and to support and help humanity to find this non-invasive healing in the future of medicine of frequencies, which is now. And so over the years, I was always questioning, what is this? Where is this coming from? Like the movie Contact, where the uh, diagrams and the drawings kind of came through, this all came through and I was able to draw it and depict it when I don't know where it actually came from. So I was sitting in the egg one day and what they showed me was planet Sirius B. I used to be there, past life. And I my teachers are the ones that are bringing this to me. And I just signed up to be on planet earth and they're supporting me. So when I was in there, I had blue light on the bottom and purple on the top. And I just had this really strange cry. I was crying because I finally connected to them again and I felt their presence in so much love, but then sadness that I missed them so much. So it was a really strange cry. 
And then they showed me my friend's face, my friend Douglas. And I thought, why are they showing me Douglas's face? And I said, he's Syrian as well. So I hadn't spoken to him for probably 10 years. He's this crazy guy that just is older and super wise. He's lived with a Bushman. He's done breatharian diets. He's done everything. And so I call him up. I said, would you happen to be Syrian? He goes, well, yes, I am. Why do you ask? <laughs> but this is either going to be a strange conversation or it's going to be really comfortable. And it was really comfortable. I said, can you come in to the center and tell me what you feel with this egg? And he said, absolutely. So he shows up a couple of days later. He looks at it and he says, huh. He said, you and I met on a spaceship when we were out in outer space. Your current boyfriend was the mechanic. And I flew these egg shaped ships. You were the master geneticist. He said, as long as I, if I blew up, as long as you had one cell, you would bring me back. Every time you would bring me back. I would blow up. You could have one cell. You'd bring me back. And he said, so I think this technology is going to rejuvenate people. It's going to help them like anti-aging and all kinds of great things to help them to heal. So he said, I don't want to lean back in the chair. You know that the chair is a, like a recliner chair. He said, I don't want to lean back because when I flew these ships, I was sitting up and the controls were right here. So he came out and I said, how was the experience? And he said, it was the most divine feminine, beautiful experience I've ever had in my life. He said they were, they were in there so kind and so gentle and they were just rubbing my face and my cheeks and he said and it was just this beautiful healing and he said like good job because I really think that sometimes our egos get in the way as human beings and what I wanted to make sure the download was authentic it was exactly what I was given and it wasn't me getting in my own way and just making up stuff and saying, well maybe we'll add this or maybe we'll add that because over the years, I've heard at least 100 people tell me how they would have done it differently. And it had to be wood. It couldn't have all this technology. I didn't want screens in there. I, I didn't want Wi-Fi in there. I didn't. None of the equipment is run off of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. If you do uh, test the EMFs in there, there's no EMFs in there. It's like a Faraday cage because of the sacred geometry and the dimensions and the intention and the love and there's so much, the, the lights, the sound, the consciously created music. I only hire musicians who have a high heart energy and an intention to help heal the planet. So the music is so beautiful. And there's so many things like Taj Mahal. Every tile has an intention. Every piece of this has an intention of what it's supposed to be, what it's supposed to do, and how it's supposed to serve and support the people that are in there. I love the fact that you just said in the beginning of this that your friend Douglas talked about that these were spaceships that you flew because that was my feeling. And I don't know that anybody else says that, but the moment I was stunned, I didn't know what to expect. And I don't know if people can see on the cover of your book, but also in my newsletter about our interview I'm going to include pictures of me in front of the egg because I want people to see some of the inside and the outside of it. But it is nothing that's claustrophobic. It is, you know, a grand design. But I know when I entered it, immediately that was my feeling. I am getting in a spacecraft. So whether that's my extreme sensitivity or that's for me in other lifetime knowing, that was definitive for me. And I love the fact that, you know, people like, that's a lot of people, over a hundred people telling you how to better your design, even though you get this gorgeous galactic download on it and say, no, it needs to be made of wood or you need Wi-Fi. And you, it doesn't after experiencing it needs none of those. I'm so glad you stuck to what you knew was your unique design and invention and you know, this is very powerful. I, I think also because a lot of your history with the relationships and so forth you were in, there was a disempowerment that went on. Um, and I can relate to that too with some past relationships, you know, because it's a, it's painful, but it's a great learning tool to say, I'm never going to do that again. 
I'm going to do me, period. And so with all that you've got going on with the egg, talk about what kind of things, Gail, it works on. What do you know it can heal? Absolutely. And let me go back a little bit, because when I first started this journey, I had a shaman come in, somebody like yourself, who said, you know, you're going to be doing this invention. And I said, no. And I said to her, only men invent things. Where that came from, I have no idea, but I do. And that's what I said. I said, only men invent things. And she wanted to slap me. And, but I grew up in, you know, Detroit, automotive industry. Then I was in the good old boys network and telecom Then I was in Hollywood. So that came through. And the, um, the fact that what you said, people, even claustrophobia tell me it feels really expansive in there. And Jake Weaver from the Midnight on Earth podcast was just in a, a center and doing a session in Oregon. And he said, after the doors closed, he felt that the walls disappeared and he was in the universe. It was in spaceship and he just saw stars. So it was really beautiful. So everybody has their own experience with it, depending on where you are in your, in your journey. So what it can help with is anywhere from A to Z. And I can't say that it's the silver bullet, but if there's a silver bullet, this is it because your body can heal itself naturally. So if the egg puts your body into an environment to reset your autonomic nervous system and to clean out your chakras and balance your body and create a homeostasis, the body doesn't know disease by name. And when it brings that space of love and you walk into the space of the center and you are met with somebody who's super loving and you feel that love and you raise your vibration, disease doesn't live in love. Disease doesn't live in gratitude. Disease lives in fear, shame, guilt, envy, jealousy. So what it does is it connects you to the confidence of your higher self. So you can spend that time being confident, love, gratitude, and disease just kind of melts away. So it also helps with environmental toxins. So Parkinson's is often heavy metals, neurological, creating the tremors. So we will smell heavy metals. The body's healing itself because you're resetting that autonomic nervous system, your rest and digest, your fight or flight coming into balance, and the body's able to just then release those toxins that are stuck in there, release that emotional trauma that's stuck in the cell memory. I was molested by the priest of a parish when I was 14. And that was my story for a long time. And it's not my story anymore. It's something that happened to me. And now I can send so much love to that priest and say, thank you for the experience, because now I can help women who come in. And I used to have my own center who say I was molested. And I can tell them, you don't have to be that story. That doesn't have to be your story. You can release that uh, rape, um, any kind of victimhood is a negative lower vibration. We have to forgive. We have to raise ourselves above that and be in a place of love and gratitude and disease can't touch you. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I really like that. I like that this is, you know, because one of my dreams for when we have first open contact with other beings from other planets, I don't like to call them aliens, but our family, our cosmo, cosmos family and brothers and sisters, I'm very excited for that galactic connection. And one of the technologies I'm most excited about is a med bed. And so this feels like the start of um of that. And one of the other things I thought was really interesting was, you know, there's paperwork to fill out before the appointment. And paperwork can be very annoying because specifically when you're going to see a Western doctor, my experiences, I'll fill out four pages of stuff. I go in to see him or her and they actually never read it. And so they're asking me these questions all over again. I find that annoying. But with your paperwork, it actually is something that the owner or whomever is the facilitator needs to know about you very deeply because they're going to set the music for you, the lights for you, the experience for you and whatever your challenges are. And I thought, well, amazing. Somebody actually cares about what I have to say and where I've been and why I'm here. It's important. Well, 
that's what I tell my center owners and they also feel it. It's not like I have to tell them because the eggs have attracted them to be their guardians. And we feel like everybody is important. Everybody's an integral part of their community. Everybody has a contribution and we all are one. And so what one of us is suffering, we're all suffering. So as an empath, which is a superpower, I feel the suffering of what's going on in society. And so I try to transmute it and stay in a place of love and gratitude and smile at people and hug strangers and talk to people. And it's just, I think we need to get to that place where we're all, we all understand we're in this together and we should love each other more and not fear each other more. And so, yeah, the med beds, I just, it was so funny that you said that because I just got a text from somebody who just purchased an egg for their home. And she said, I think it's time for me to tell you who I am. I'm not from here. And she said, I'm here to help you. We just sold our business and we're going to create these sanctuaries and every sanctuary is going to have an egg. And she said, these are the med beds. And I'm reading this going, it was a big, long text. And I was like, holy cow. So you never know you know, who's going to enter your journey and, yeah. and support you. And it just, uh, I'm so humbled by it. I understand that the harmonic egg and maybe the ellipse have this ability to detect the vibration of our body and any imbalance. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So we talk about there's science behind it, but you know, there's really not a machine out there that can test scalar waves right now and can test frequencies and can test you know, the body. So what we've come up with, with using the pendulums and dowsing, and, and I just, I co uh, contact a lot of healers and, you know, cause I don't want to be the one that says, this is what it's doing. And, and because I don't know. So I ask other people, I think, I think this is what it's doing. Can you kind of tune in and confirm or deny that? And so we have a, an energy of the human energy. So that interacts somehow with the egg energy and the egg can find those places that are imperfections and target them. So a lot of people will say, so weird. I had this pain in my shoulder and I did tear my rotator cuff a long time ago and I couldn't lift my arm past, you know, the, my, the top of my shoulder. You know, some people will be listening to this, so I don't want to say here. Um, and, but then they walk out to their car and they're flinging their arm up and down, like they're cheering. And, and you can tell that they're just shocked that in one session, they can have that range of motion. It is so, so crazy. So I think, yes, the egg is finding a way. If you can think of uh, things like a, a frequency, it's giving off a frequency and then the egg can hit it with an exact opposite frequency to neutralize it. So it's, oh, that's Lyme disease. Let's hit it with an exact opposite frequency and slam, neutralize it, have it go dormant so that it's not plaguing the person anymore. What is your recommendation for how many sessions? Do you go intuitive with somebody or how would I know how many for me versus maybe a man who has stage three prostate cancer versus et cetera? Right. You know, it is a bit intuitive, but I tell everybody three to six sessions is really going to tell you what it can do for you because you don't run a marathon by running around the block. You train for it. You have to, you know, there's muscle memory that has to, you know, train. So this is the same thing. If you have abused your nervous system and been stuck in fight or flight and stressful situations, and all of a sudden you have certain diseases, that's the normal. Your body thinks that's normal and that's what it's created. So you, in order to undo that three to six sessions is recommended. And a lot of center cell packages of three and six, there's 10 session protocols, so we actually spend the time with you to find out what is it you want to work on? What level of wellness do you wish to achieve? Mm -hmm. Do you want to continue to do maybe monthly sessions to increase your spiritual awareness after you've been, you know, kind of worked on the physical, the environmental, the emotional, which is what every day. Um, and then you want to work on the spiritual. So the more I do sessions, the more intuitive I am. I can get into an elevator and I can pretty much tell you what's going on with people. I can pick up their energy. I know how they're feeling. It's a blessing and a curse sometimes because sometimes I'm so sad for people. I'm like, oh, that person is so sad and, and so heavy. And so it just depends on which level of wellness you wish to achieve. But three to six sessions to give it a try. Don't, don't go in once and say, oh, it worked or didn't work. You, you really need to give it a try. It's not... It's not magic. Yeah. Talk more about the, the importance 
of the music? How is it used? How is it put together? What is its function? So when I first started this journey, I read at least 98 books on frequencies, you know, Sophagio Sweet, 528 Hertz to heal the DNA. And it nothing was resonating with me mm -hmm. until I picked up a book by Kay Gardner, who's now passed, called Sounding the Inner Landscape. <clears throat> and that was the aha moment the waveforms of the instruments and how they affect the organs. It's not about the frequencies because the egg itself will, will resonate at 1400 Hertz. They started out at 900, but the more eggs that go on the planet, the more they're all connected, the more powerful they're all becoming. Oh, wow. Why would I want to put 396 or 528 in there? So I focus on mm -hmm. the keys or the tones of the instruments. So mm -hmm. it might be a flute in the key of C. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to combine that with drumming. So the waveform of the flute and the waveform of the drum, it's going to do one thing for certain people for their intention. Then I'm going to look at piano. Piano is in a lot of our pieces because it seems to be the thing. The waveform is resetting the nervous system and, and heart rate variability tests are showing that every time you do the egg, there's some improvement to the, um, to the autonomic nervous system. So yay, we've done live blood analysis. We've done different things with different instruments. And then I said, okay, so if this is doing this and this is doing this, you know, what can, what can we do? And then we add the color of the chakras. So if you have a brain tumor, we're going to work with the instruments and the colors that bring the third eye chakra back into balance. And so I found that the waveforms are really important for the systems and the organs of the body. And then we work with the chakras, with the colors. And so we combine that, as Edgar Casey said a long time ago, bring together the spiritual forces of sound, the spiritual forces of light. It would be a great modality for the future. So I feel like Edgar Casey's consciousness and Royal Rife and Wilhelm Reich with the Oregon box and Nikola Tesla all kind of came through in really geeking out with me wow. and in one of Alex's uh, eggs in Santa Clarita, somebody had seen Royal Rife and they didn't know who it was. It was a young girl. And she said, I saw this man and Alex is so intuitive. He said, was it this guy? Show, and she's like, that was him. He's like, that's Royal Rife. She said he was in there like tweaking things and turning things and just sitting there. She said it was hilarious. And another woman had seen Kay Gardner, a little blonde lady in her session, just kind of sitting on the edge of the chair. So I feel like they're so proud of, you know, bringing this together and collaborating with me. And so the music is so important that the musicians have a high heart energy um, because I think, and I believe that if you eat food from somebody who's angry, you can kind of eat their anger. And so what about somebody who's singing a song and they're angry? Are you picking up their anger in their song with the vibration? So mm -hmm. I'm really careful about what kind of music we put in there so that people are having the best experience they can possibly have. Mm. Yes, the music was very important. Well, music is one of the most important things to me in my life. So I would be really sensitive to that. And I'm a singer, we've got a medicine band and that is the thing I lead with always when whether we're doing a sound bath or a festival or a ceremony, for me, it is about leading with love and allowing the love to come through my voice and my being. People feel it is no doubt. That is the one it, you could say, oh, the music heals or the sound bath heals. And that's nice, but I really believe it's the love. It's the energy holding the room and the people that makes the difference. So that makes a lot of sense to me. And then what about the sacred geometry? Because that's the other thing. I was like, whoa, I was totally unaware. I don't know what was going on with the sacred geometry. Can you describe it and what I missed when I was in my yeah. trance? That golden ratio is really an important um, element, I think, for nature. And when you look out in nature, you see a lot of, you know, petals of flowers. You'll say, oh, that has six petals. That has nine petals. That has three petals. And Tesla had a lot to do with three sixes and nines. And, you know, if everything's divisible by that, even when I was young, I had um, number three was my softball number. Mm. And, and, you know, I just had to have number three. So I've always been obsessed with numbers like this and three sixes and nines. And so I think the sacred geometry is so important to the power of the harmonic egg. 
We actually have a center in Fort Myers. It survived the hurricane. We have a center in Louisville, Colorado that survived the Marshall fires. Wow. We have a center in Garland, Texas that survived a tornado. We have a center in Traverse City that survived a flood. And if you look at nature, nature says, oh, sacred geometry, let's go around that. And it's almost proof mm -hmm. when I hear these stories, I'm like, everything was devastated with the Marshall fires in Louisville, but and then Maui, we have eggs in Maui. So all of these survived these natural disasters. So the power of sacred geometry and nature and how the pyramids are still standing, mm -hmm. there's such, there's something there. Now I can't claim to know exactly what that is, but there's something there. Yeah. That's amazing. I need to be some sacred geometry. So everything just <laughs> rolls right past me. That's beautiful. <laughs> Not that I attract a lot of stuff, but still that's, that's uber power. <clears throat> and I admit the only time I've ever seen sacred geometry, and I have seen it with my own eyes, is when I was on ayahuasca. <clears throat> and it just changed the landscape of everything I would normally perceive with my vision and suddenly I would look out and it was everywhere. It was so beautiful. The colors and the forms it took, ah, uh, you know, that will be with me forever. This can be a natural high. You don't have to do ayahuasca or smoke a joint or do mushrooms. I think so many people tell me, Gal, this was a natural high. And even when I come out, people are more beautiful colors are more vibrant and babies and animals will come up to me. Like I have a different aura. It's like a rainbow color. That's what I've been told that people describe. And so babies will be crying. I walk into a restaurant and then they stop and look at me and they just follow me or I'll, somebody's dog will run up to me and they're like, Oh my God, my dog doesn't go up to anybody. Like, who are you? Or I sit in an airport, I was sitting in an airport in Key Largo or in Fort Lauderdale coming home from Key Largo. The lady was sitting next to me and she's like, you're weird, but I like you. She was a New Yorker, right? So she just says whatever's on her mind. And she's like, you're weird, but I like you. Uh -huh. Change numbers. And the next day I'm getting, you know, I, I texted her to make sure she got to her place safely. And I got an XO, like, okay, I just met this lady, but already there's the XO, love and hugs or love and kisses, whatever. And so I, I, I feel so honored to mm, be somebody that people can feel that and, and hopefully that they can feel more of that with strangers, that just that love and that oneness. Do you have a success story you can share? I know you have many but is there something that comes to mind apropos to this particular conversation about somebody who went in for the egg and had a really phenomenal result and experience? Well, what just showed up in my head was to tell the story of my boyfriend. Um, he is 71 next week mm -hmm. and he lost his wife after 27 years. They met in the Navy. He was in the Navy for 22 years. Wow. It was the love of his life. He brought a cold home from uh, the plant because after he'd retired from the Navy, he worked for Sara Lee Bakery and he you know, brought home uh, a cold and she got the cold. It got, she got pneumonia. She aspirated in the shower and passed away. A few months later, he had a heart attack and 20, they said, I think they said 20% of his, I can't remember the percentage of his, how much his heart died. And so he ended up with stints and a pacemaker. And I think it was a broken heart. And so he's been doing sessions for, we've been together now 10 years. This was 14, 15 years ago, he lost his wife. And he's been doing sessions and he had to get the pacemaker battery uh, replaced. After 10 years, they replaced the battery. So they needed to get his ejection fraction number, his cardiac output number. And I get work with a lot of medical doctors who are so into this because they said, we can't reset the nervous system with any medicine we have. So we love this. And so he says, give me his numbers, give me his cardiac um, output and his ejection fraction numbers. And I'll tell you how much of his heart is, is dead. When I gave him the numbers, he said, these are his numbers. I said, yeah, those are his numbers. He said, this is a fully functioning heart. I said, wait, wait, wait what are you saying? He said, it's either regenerated or 
they should have never put in the pacemaker. They should have never done this dance day. You know, so we don't know. I ordered his medical records, but we, we couldn't find the data. So I will just say that I think his heart regenerated. I think our hearts and our, and our organs can regenerate. Um, I think that we're just hoodwinked into believing we can't heal. We can't, you know, because it's, um, takes away our power. We have so much power, but I also tease them. I'm like, it's cause you love me so much. <laughs> Your heart grew like the Grinch, right? So I tease them, but that's just one story. And it was over time. I mean, it was probably a year's worth of sessions, but we do have people like in one session, uh, a lady came in and she said, you know, I don't have medically, I, for medical tests, I don't have Lyme disease anymore, but she said, I'm still getting the symptoms of Lyme disease, but the doctors say, I can't help you because you don't have it medically. You don't have it anymore. So she went into the egg and she said that she saw this blue energetic tick in her head. And she said, that's crazy. She said it popped out of her head. It's ran around inside the uh, egg. She said an Andromedan being came in and chomped it up. And she's telling me this in the lobby with people who are maybe not really in tune with this. And I'm trying to shut her up because I'm like, they're going to run out the door. But the way she said it with so much love and compassion and, and passion, they were sitting there with their hands on their, um, what, how do I describe what I'm doing? My, the hand on my chin, like so enthralled with the conversation. And she said, that's what I needed. I needed to release the energetic tick. It wasn't about the physical, it was about the energy of it still there. And that was wow, powerful. When we have a condition for so long, there is the physical 3D aspect and that makes sense and that can be healed 100%. And yet when you have something that has persisted for so very long, like a record that plays over and over, there is a groove we can get into with a way of being, well, I am this, I have that. And that is a whole nother aspect of letting go. And I love that you shared that story. I don't know how many of you out there are thinking about yourselves and what you've held on to energetically, or frankly, what is energetically held on to you. And we've allowed because we didn't know, but that we could, you know, with an egg, at, at some way to choose to release that piece, that aspect that's no longer needed. It served its purpose. Thank you. I send you to the light. Or the Andromedans. hundred <laughs> percent. You know, I mean, I had a story come up recently where um, three people, so you know how you were talking about the synchronicities, three people told me they went to a healer and they got read um, from somebody that was in the area. It wasn't their reading, but they were astute enough because they're tuned into their body and their energy enough to know they're not reading me. But what if they didn't know and they got this reading and they started thinking, oh, I'm, I'm in this deep, dark place and whatever. But I had a reading when I was 29 years old and the, the reader said, you will not be financially free till you're in your 50s. And I was already rubbing two nickels together, was after a divorce and things were not going well. And it really put me in a state of depression for you know a long time. But I finally came to grips with, okay, I'm going to struggle for 20 years until I can have financial freedom. What if I didn't have to go through that, that she put that in my subconscious and it was not correct. And I did. I, in fact, struggled for 20 years until I was in my fifties. Ah! And all of a sudden, you know, and it's like, I think that was in my subconscious. So we have to be really, really careful who we allow into our energy field, who we let work on us, who we let heal us, what, you know, energies that are in our um, in our daily lives. And we just, we have to really take our power back. And I think it's really important for people to hear that because a lot of people do get a reading. Oh, you're never going to marry. You're never going to find anybody. You're never, you know, who gets to put that limitation on you? I call that a black worm, meaning that, you know, there is a worm literally with dark intentions that come into us generally impelled by somebody else. And I know exactly what you're saying, Gail. I've had that 
as well. I had it recently where I was working with somebody. I didn't even ask them the question. And as you know, I do these shamanic programs, right? I offer these group programs worldwide through Zoom. And he said to me out of nowhere, and he said, oh, they want me to tell you that your class, your program's not going to ver do very well. You're not going to have as many people as you thought you would, but don't worry. It's going to get better and better as you go on. And I thought, why would you feel the need to share that? Like, that's actually information. I don't, I'm not thrilled here. I don't even know the validity of it and who you're talking to, but I get upset when that happens and people do it all the time. They put these, you know, black worms, if you will, in your space out of, I guess, an idea that they're helping somehow, but you know, then keep that information to yourself. If you think it's so true, sit back and watch, you know, watch what I create or anybody else creates and see how right you are or not. Also, because you and I both know the idea of being a psychic means that you can perceive in this particular moment where a path is headed, but the next moment I, you, anybody else will make a different choice. So it's a different path, right? We have free will. So mm -hmm. I think it's very important to be so careful with things like this, especially for folks who are healers and intuitives and et cetera out there. You know, if you know what you know, beautiful, just be very careful about what you say, because everyone is trying so much, working so hard to heal themselves, to better themselves, to become more visible, more prosperous, you know, do the mission we came here to do. And I think it's important to get as much support as possible. So what do you do, Gail? What do you do on a daily basis that is a ritual or a practice that really helps you to be grounded and to create at the level you create today? Great question. Um, first thing in the morning, I go out to my horse. I actually moved onto a property so I could be with my horse because she is so grounding and she is so galactic and she is so much of a unicorn without the horn. Um, she's so spiritual. She's, uh, you know, just amazing. I could go on. So first thing in the morning, go out and feed her. She gets a snack uh, a couple hours after she eats. She gets, uh, she gets to eat every four hours until I go to bed, do a night check. And so I'm out there and I tap on her neck when she's eating. She picks her head up like, okay, give me my hug. I wrap my arms around her and I give her a hug. Sometimes she gets annoyed and it depends on my energy. I can tell when my energy is crappy because she was like, uh-uh, you're in a bad way. Don't put that on me. Don't throw up the energy on me. So it's a mirror and I know how I'm being by her mirroring my energy. Great. That's amazing. Love it. So I'm outside all the time. Rain, snow, sleet, shine. I love it. So she's my rock. She's my bestie. I also do yoga every day. And I really try to take a lot of breaks. So movement. And I try to play. I didn't have enough play in my life. And um, I realized that that is needed for me to be creative is to play. So we just got back from Key Largo. I donate, I created a ministry so I could donate to animals and I, and children. I created a scholarship fund with Susie Miller to help autistic uh, families, you know, with, with autistic children. Um, and I donated to the Island Dolphin Care. So we got to go swim with the dolphins and we got to go to their gala. So that was my play. And I got to do a belly swim with the dolphins. And so what it is, is you kind of put your hands out and this is a murky water. So you can't see the dolphins coming, but you can put your hands out like Superman and the dolphin all of a sudden pops up and it's right in your face. Their chest is right there. You grab onto their fins, pull yourself into their uh, belly and they're swimming upside down with you on their belly. Amazing. Oh, so I play. So those are the things that I do. And it's just really important. Yes. Yes. Oh, lovely. And this is Dare to Dream, Gail. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? So uh, I don't want to say I want to live forever because I really don't, but I do want to live into my hundreds and still be of quality life. I want to be able to replenish all my vitamins and minerals with colors and sounds. I don't want to have to be ingesting this toxic food and these you know, supplements with fillers. I want to be able to 
find that place in my life where sound and vibrations is giving me everything I need. And I want to live where I'm on stage and there's a bunch of young women and they're just like, did you hear that old lady and what she's saying? Like she's talking about sex and she's talking about this. And I just want to be an inspiration um, and just a joy in people's lives to create hope. And so that I want people to know that if I can do it, anybody can. You can do it. Anybody can. And your book, Unlocking the Ancient Secrets to Healing by Gail Lynn. Folks can find you at harmonicegg.com, any place else they should look for you. That's it. That's where all of our locations are. You can find the locations, you can find the book, you can find music, and we have downloadable music with uh, song sheets. So it'll tell you, these are the instruments that are being used. These are the chakras it's going to invoke. These are the organs it's going to help. These are the colors that you can use while you're listening to this music. And it's all consciously created. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Amazing, amazing that you stepped into this and who you are today. Thank you. Folks, I end today's show with this quote from Pema Chodron. Nothing ever goes away until it teaches us what we need to know. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation. The show is Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Please leave a message. Please subscribe. I depend actually on you guys who watch the show. Every time you leave a comment and every time you subscribe, you help change the matrix of what I'm doing, attract more people who need this conversation, and it really helps me. If you're listening to the podcast and you'd like to see myself and my guest, there is the video, highly recommended. Go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger or Spotify, go to Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. And next week on the show, the guest is, oh my goodness, so excited, the amazing John P. Milton. He is a meditation and Qigong instructor, an author, and an environmentalist. John P. Milton is the founder of Sacred Passage and the Way of Nature. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream. Always a pleasure. And remember, somewhere in your future may be a harmonic egg experience. <laughs>